All right, Jeremy Hazel here from Seven Season Studios, and this comes from our class, The Ultimate Toolmaker's Guide to the Affinity Suite. So if you like what you hear and you want a little bit more, go ahead and check out the link below for a special price for our YouTube family and a special discount on our monthly subscription plan. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Alright folks, welcome back to Affinity Designer. Now, we've been working with textures and it's easy to do textures in a raster based format. We've already done that. I've showed you how to scan them in at a high DPI. We don't need to cover that again. What I am going to show you now is how to vectorize these textures because if you're working in Affinity Designer, you might want to vectorize the texture. Plus, this gives us the opportunity to go through and adjust it to the right size. So it really takes the scalability up a notch. So the tool that I'm gonna use, and in all fairness, this is a third party software. In my opinion, it's extremely affordable every month, and I am not affiliated with this particular software. This is what I personally use, and so this is the one I trust to teach you. This is a program called Vector Magic. Now, Vector Magic, it converts the JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, GIF, whatever you want to call it, PDFs, SVG, or EPS, into vectors. Now, I use this a lot as a t-shirt designer, and the way this works, it really couldn't be simpler. You come into here. Oops, let's go ahead and bring that back up. And let's go ahead and throw our image in there. Drag and drop. Now, what it does, it uploads it. It thinks about it for a minute. And... It analyzes it and then it will trace around it. So it will vectorize the image. What I'm going to do now is because this could take a little bit given the complexity of the image, I'm going to have the editor go ahead and pause this one here and I'm going to come back to you once this thing is done. So editor, why don't we go ahead and pause and then I'll have you come back when the thing is done. All right, folks, welcome back to Affinity Designer. So. Vector Magic is finished to doing what it does here. And so we now have a vectorized texture. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is one of those things that you probably need to understand about how Vector Magic works. It creates different groups of things. And so if you have your move tool and you click here, this group right here is this area. So it tries to create different sizes of groups. Okay, so that's kind of how it works. Now, the thing that is always present and the thing you can decide what you want to do. You remember that masks, textures, and that sort of thing work in black and white. So this group here that has the white box, at the end of the day, somewhere down here in the thousands of layers that there is, let's go ahead and see if I can drag this down, there is a curve. And this curve, when we turn it off, is magical. Now, why didn't anything happen? You want to come up to layer and you want to then go to, oh, I'm sorry. You want to go to document setup, my bad. And you want to hit transparent background. Now, what this will do, this will show you all of where the white was. So a good way to represent this, I'm just going to do this for illustration purposes. You don't have to do this. All right, let's go ahead and take the rectangle down to the bottom. And I'm gonna change this to red so you can just see where everything is. So when you turn off this rectangle, let's go ahead and zip to the bottom, that's gonna take out all the white. Now there is still obviously white in here. So my advice to you if you're dealing with a texture, just leave it on. Keep it like this and go from there. Now, why would you possibly want to do this? If you're going to take this texture into a billboard size, you're going to want to vectorize it. Then when you get it to the size you want, you can then rasterize it. All right, this is just a real simple three minute thing on how vector magic works. We're going to be using this when we create assets in the next section of the course, but I wanted to introduce you to the tool because many people think that there's no easy way to do it. And this is a software that has gone the distance for me. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get into the next one.